Okay, in today's video, we are going to go over an RC circuit analysis. And this is the circuit we're going to use. It's called an RC circuit because it has resistors, R for resistors. We have a 10 and a 20 ohm resistor. We also, in the same circuit, have capacitors, C for capacitors, 6 and a 12 ohm, excuse me, 6 and a 12 microfarad capacitors. So this is our RC circuit. You will notice also that we have a 6 volt power supply and this is the circuit we're going to use and these are the questions that we are going to try to answer for this circuit. What is the total capacitance of this circuit? What is the current through the 10 ohm resistor? What is the potential difference from point X to point Y? What is the charge that is stored on the 6 microfarad capacitor and what is the potential difference for each capacitor. Now we're going to do this um, from this perspective that the circuit has been closed and running for a long time. If we had a switch, we'd close the switch. The switch is closed. We are at time equals infinity or a long time. Now what does that mean when we say that? This is what it means. It means the current has been running, the switch, the circuit has been turned on. And the, basically what it means is that the two capacitors are fully charged, okay? They're fully charged. And then the current continues to run through this outer branch of the circuit. So two things, the capacitors are charged and the current is running through those two capacitors. Okay, let's get on with this. We want to try to finish this in 10 minutes or less. What is, <clears throat> excuse me, the total capacitance of this circuit? Well, we have two capacitors only. We need to find the total capacitance of those two capacitors. Those two capacitors are in series, so we're going to use our series equation for capacitors, which is one over the total capacitance is equal to one over the capacitance of the six microfarad capacitor plus one over the capacitance of the 12 microfarad capacitor. All right? With these are not in parallel. If they were in parallel, we could simply add them up. Six and 12 would be 18. But we're in, when they're in series, we have to use the one over equation. So we have that the total capacitance is one over six plus one over 12. I just, in my calculator, put one divided by six plus one divided by 12. And I get that one over the total capacitance is equal to 0.25 microfarads. Now, it is important to remember that this is not the total capacitance. This is one over the total capacitance. To get the total capacitance, I must now take the reciprocal of this side and the reciprocal of this side. And if I do that, I get that the total capacitance is equal to one over 0.25 microfarads, which means that the total capacitance, the equivalent capacitance of these two capacitors in series is four microfarads. So that is the total capacitance of that circuit. Okay, number one. Number two, what is the current through the 10 ohm resistor? Now we said the current is running, we're in steady state, the capacitors are charged, the current is running through this outer branch. There are no capacitors, there's nothing blocking the current in this outer branch. So now we have a 10 and a 20 that are in series. The current through each of these is going to be the same. That's the current rule for resistors in series. The current is going to be the same. So if we can figure out the current through the 10, then we also know the current through the 20. And if we can use our V equals IR, Ohm's law, to do that, okay? We know the voltage. Now we're <clears throat> solving for the current. The current is the velocity divided by, excuse me, the velocity, the voltage divided by the resistance, okay? The total voltage, there's only one voltage, is six volts. Now we have to use the total resistance, and because these two resistors are in series, we just add them up, and 10 and 20 is 30. Okay, so now we're kind of finding the total current through the circuit, but there's only one branch, so that's going to be the same in both, which is 0.25 amps. So now we know the current through this resistor and this resistor and any point in this outer branch is 0.25 amps. Okay, so... That's how you find the current through the 10 ohm resistor. Now we're going to find the potential difference across point X and Y. So if we measure the potential difference from this point to this point, what will it be? Now, this is another thing you have to remember. These two branches, this branch and this branch are in parallel. 
the voltage across parallel branches in a circuit is the same. So if we can find the voltage across this branch, then we'll know the voltage across this branch because it's the same thing. Okay, basically anywhere we measure the, the voltage along here as compared to along here, it's going to be the same. So we can get pretty easily the voltage across the 20 because we can use our Ohm's law. Okay, now the question is from x to y, so I put down here voltage x to y, but really well, the way I think about it, what we're really calculating is the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor because we know the current. We know it's 0.2 amps. We know the resistance. It's 20 ohms. So that means that the voltage from X to Y, the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor is 4 volts. Well, that's in parallel to these two, the branch that contains these two capacitors, so that's going to be the same. Now, we could, and maybe we should just to check, let's find the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor because we know we you are used 4 volts on the 20 then this should really equal 2 so the voltage across the 10 is its current which is the same times its, its resistance which is 10 and that's 2 so these two have now added up to 6 and that's 6 you know when you go around a loop the voltage has to be the voltage drops and the voltage gains have to be equal to each other okay and we got that now, number three, what is the charge stored on the six microfarad capacitor? Okay, now this is something else you need to remember. We have two capacitors in series. All right, we figured out the total charge. Excuse me, we, to we figured out the total charge, the total capacitance is four, all right, microfarads. Now, you need to remember for capacitors in series that the total charge and the charge on each capacitor is the same. So the charge on this capacitor, okay, and the charge on this capacitor is going to be the same. And they're going to equal the total charge. So we're going to use Q equals C times V, and we know that the charge on the 6 and the charge on the 12 are the same. And they also equal the total charge. That's the rule for capacitors in series. Well, we can figure out the charge on the 6 and the 12 together, okay, because they have the same charge, and they're equal to the total, is equal to the capacitance of the 6 and the 12 times the voltage across the 6 and the 12, across both of them, across that whole branch. So we know that the equivalent capacitance, the total capacitance of those two is 4 microfarads. We know the voltage across each of those, across both of them, excuse me, across both of them, is 4 volts. Therefore, we just multiply those two together. The total charge, the total capacitance, the total voltage, and you get that the charge stored on the 6 and the charge stored on the 12 and the total amount of charge stored is 16 microcoulombs. Okay? That's, I would say that's the trickiest part of this. Remember the charge rule for series capacitors. All right? All right, the last one. Now we can get the potential difference across each capacitor. Well, once again, we're going to go with Q equals C times V, not V equals I times R, because we have capacitors, not resistors. And we know that the voltage across the 12, okay, this is the voltage across the 12, is equal to the charge on the 12 divided by the capacitance of the 12. Well, the charge on the 12 is the same as the 6, which is the same as the total, which is 16. The capacitance of the 12 is 12, and that means that's 1.33 volts. So there's a potential difference across this from this point to this point of 1.33 volts. Now, if you want to know the potential difference from here to here, we could just take one point, we could just take 4 minus 1.33, because we figured out earlier that the charge all the way across the branch, excuse me, the voltage all the way across the branch is 4 volts. Well, 1.33 is on this capacitor. The other part of it, 267, must be on the other. But let's just calculate it and see if we come up with the right answer. So we have the, the charge on the 6 divided by the capacitance of the 6. We figured out earlier that the charge on the 6 and the charge on the 12 is the same series capacitors. So it's 16. This time it's divided by 6. And we get 2.67. And if you add these up, 1.33 plus 2.67, of course, you get 4 volts, and that's what it should add up to because we figured out earlier that the voltage all the way across the branch is 4 volts. 
Okay, so that's that. I hope you found that video helpful. You know, it's a lot to go through, 10 minutes, but that's an RC circuit. That's a pretty basic RC circuit. Um, I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, you can give me a thumbs up or a nice comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much, and we will see you in the next video.